Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Mythog. This is Mythog episode 27. And it's been a while since I made one of these, so I'm pretty sure a lot of you are like, what is this series? Why is it titled this and all of that? But basically, to make a long story short, Mythog is a series where I basically cut on the camera and just talk about whatever I want. Hence the name of it being Mythog is short for me thoughts, which is a play on my thoughts. Like it's layers to it. it not really, but in a sense, it is still kind of layers to it. And that's what this is about. It's just basically my own singular podcast which once again i just talk about whatever i want to talk about so in most cases where i would love to have your undivided attention this is one of those times where it's like dude divide your attention cut this shit on in the background go do whatever you want to do and just listen to me ramble on about whatever and in the in in this particular case what we're going to be talking about today is whether or not the gaming industry is dying more specifically the triple a side of the gaming industry is dying and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So hopefully I'll hook you in with that. If I haven't, I well, I don't know what to tell you. I'll see you around. But if I have hooked you in, then stick around just for a little bit longer because there's a few things I wanna get out the way real quick. And then we're gonna start breaking down where the gaming industry is going, how we got here and all of that, right? So first, the first thing I wanna preface is by saying this. I might sound a little bit different Okay, I might sound a little bit different as I explain, uh, talk about this stuff because my setup is not really meant for me to be looking at the camera face forward like this. So I had to do this weird setup in order to get everything to work. So I may sound a little bit distant in a little bit area moments because I'm literally having to lean into my microphone to sound as good as possible. But sometimes I am gonna move back so it might be a little bit airy. But hey, as long as you can hear just fine on the other end, that's all that matters. The second thing I wanted to go over real quick was that when I talk about this brief overview part that I'm about to go over, like this is literally gonna kick off this whole discussion is this brief overview of the gaming industry. I'm not trying to be super specific and accurate like a historian on some of the things I'm gonna be talking about in this brief overview of the game of the history of the gaming industry. You see what I'm saying? So when I talk about something, I'm not trying to get it down to the exact date, the exact time and all of that. So I'm not trying to say, oh, well this game came out in 1984 on December 12th at 12 p.m. I'm not doing all of that. It's not that fucking serious. I'm just gonna be in a general ballpark. So if I'm a couple years off, nigga, I'm just a couple years off. It doesn't fucking matter. It's just as long as you get what I'm I'm trying to say within the time frame I'm talking about that's all that matters to me and that's all the stuff I wanted to get out the way so now let's actually talk about the topic of this video so I'm gonna ask this question again because I'm also gonna give you a partial answer when I say it uh, say it this time around so is the gaming industry dying more specifically the triple a side of the game industry dying and my, well, I'm, I didn't mean to say question, but my answer to that is no, it's not dying. It's the furthest from dying, but, 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 but it is going in a direction of another medium that we all are fond of and know of. And not only that, the gaming industry for a while has been showing signs that it's trying to be like this medium. And that is where the real problem lies. But before we get into that stuff, Let's give a brief history and a brief overview of the game industry. And I promise you, all of this is gonna play into my answer and what and what I genuinely think is going on in the gaming industry. I'm telling you, once everything wraps up by the end of this, you're gonna say, hey, I think this nigga's on to something. I think he's reading into it way better than everybody else possibly could. I'm telling you. So the gaming industry as we know it started in the 70s. I'm talking about the foundation that the gaming industry that we now know of was built on started in the 70s. Now, technically gaming started in the 60s. That's where you had games like Pong and Asteroid and all of that. Those games came out in the 60s, but the gaming industry as we know it started in the 70s. And, it, and the best way I can put this is that the gaming industry during that time, one of the things that really drove it for the longest Right, and I want you to keep these two words in mind because these two words go in tandem for a lot of the things that have been going on here recently, right? I'm not gonna say they fully responsible, but unfortunately it's things that have been neglected. That's what I'll say. It's two aspects that have been neglected in the gaming industry for the past probably 10 years now, if not a little bit more than that. But that is during this time, because the because gaming was a new medium, right? Because think about it. Think about it from a 70s person's perspective. All you've had up until this point is radio, television, and whatever the fuck is going on outside. That's it. That's all you had. 
you had radio television and whatever the fuck was going on outside that's all you had and when i'm talking about outside i'm talking about sports all of that shit whatever was going on outside that's all you had back then then all of a sudden you get this new medium that comes up and it's gaming interactive television i think they used to call that back in the day if i'm not mistaken i'm like 99 percent sure but even if they did it fuck it it's still a good name for it you're talking about interactive television now you're able to sit in your living room or sit in your room and press buttons on this weird controller thing and the character on screen is doing it this was a whole new thing that the world had never experienced before so for the longest, all throughout the 70s, all throughout the 80s and early 90s, and I know we had the video game crash in the 70s or 80s or whenever the fuck it was, but we're not going to talk about all that. We're not talking about all that. We're just talking about during this era when it comes to gaming, one of the things that it was all about because it was such a new medium was innovation and creativity, right? And that is what ultimately led to the Bit Wars. Now, for all of you out there who may be young and don't know anything about the Bit Wars, and this was even before my time. I was born in the 90s, so the Bit Wars was even way before me. But once again, I pay attention to the uh, gaming industry side of things and the history of the gaming industry. So this stuff is like secondhand knowledge to me. Back then, the Bit Wars was basically a war between all the big companies that was out, out at the time that had consoles. Um, so you had, a, I think the Atari, I think Atari was still up and kicking during that time. I'm pretty sure they were. So you had Atari who was still kicking because yeah, they had like the Jaguar and all that shit, I think it was. So you had Atari, you had Nintendo, you had Sega, you had all of these companies who were trying to push as many bits on their consoles as possible. And that's where the whole 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit and all of that comes from. From what I understand, though, 64-bit is is like the 3D era, which we're about to get into in a second. Hence why uh, Nintendo called it the Nintendo 64 for 64 bits and all of that stuff. But I could be wrong on that. I'm, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I got a good brain, but I don't remember every fucking thing when it comes to the history of the game industry. But I'm pretty sure I'm spot on about that. But nonetheless, that's what that was about. And that's what was driving the gaming industry for the longest, right? Was how far can we push these bits, this 2D era that we're in? How far can we push it? And then this is when we hit the 3D era, talking about mid to late 90s. So you're talking about 70s, 80s, early 90s. It was all about 2D bits. How, can, how far can we push them? Then we hit about 95, 96, and this is when 3D takes over. So if innovation during that time period or during that era of video games with the bits was a clock, at this moment, when 3D became a standard, not only in movies, because remember, during this time when 3D really blew up, even though we had Jurassic Park and stuff like that, we had Toy Story, the first fully animated uh, uh, movie ever came out during this time and you already know that with that happening in the movie industry it was definitely going to happen in the game industry and that's what ultimately ended up happening so once again if innovation was a clock during the era of the bits right during the 2d era of video games right that clock was officially reset once we made that switch to 3d so that's what so i'm talking about nintendo 64 playstation 1 playstation 2 original xbox all of that stuff that clock oh sega dreamcast can never forget the dreamcast shout out to uh rival schools shout out to fucking uh uh power stone and shout out to marvel's capcom 2 never let the dreamcast fucking die especially with those three games don't ever let that fucking console die with just those three games alone anyway if you know you know especially with rival schools rival schools is my fucking jam i didn't play it back in the day unfortunately i didn't get to experience that game until many decades later but that's how fucking good that game is that decades later even when i was when i was like a young adult and i finally played uh rival schools i was like this is one of the best fucking games i've ever played rival schools needs to make a comeback i don't understand what the fuck sega's doing anyway my point is the clock had been reset during that time right because we had basically went from a 2d plane of existence which was just a foreground in the background to now three dimension what we live in what we interact with every day us looking at our hand and it's in three dimension and shit like that now we're getting that in the gaming industry so now there's literally a whole new dimension that they can play with that they can do stuff with now you can look around freely and do all of this other shit you're not confined to a 2d plane so that's why i say when the, when 3d became the standard 
the clock on innovation hit reset and with that the uh, clock on creativity hit reset and because of that that's the reason why so many people like me who are my age are so fond of the late 90s and early 2000s era of gaming. When you're talking about the PS1, the Nintendo 64, the original Xbox and all of that, because that's when gaming was at its most creative for us, right? Because once again, we had entered into a whole new plane of existence or, or and, and I, I'm not trying to sound like overly spiritual. I know when I say it like that, it sounds like I'm about to start going on some weird spiritual rant, but tr it's true. It was a whole nother plane of existence there. It's two different things. 2D and 3D are two different things. Everybody knows this. So when you have something like that, that you have never really participated, or not participated in, but you had never really worked in before, and now you're being handed all these new, new, uh, new tools to work in this brand new dimension this new plane of existence for video games the creativity is gonna be off the fucking chain that's why and i'm just gonna count the playstation 2 because i was a playstation kid okay i was a ps2 kid so that's what i'm mainly gonna be referring to right so you're talking about during this time within the playstation 2 playstation and all of that which i'm just gonna be referring to for to those because like i said i was a playstation kid you're talking about during the playstation 1 in the playstation 2 era when we're talking about creativity who, what are some of the biggest mascots you can think of off rip that came out during that time when we're talking about creatively? Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper, uh, Kratos and God of War, uh, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, the list goes on and on. And that's just me going for the top tier fruit, right? That's like me going for like the top of the top, top shelf fruit right there. Uh, you can even throw uh, 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 Metal Gear in there because, you know, Metal Gear was on PlayStation for a long time. I know it started off on Nintendo and stuff like that with the old school, you know, uh, probably like 32-bit or whatever it was, uh, Metal Gear. But we all know where Metal Gear really started to take place was during... Uh, the PlayStation 2 time or PlayStation 1 uh, era with, with Metal Gear Solid 1, right? So you can even throw uh, uh, Snake in there. All of that was going on during that time because that's when people was being the most creative because of this brand new tool set that they had and that they had just acquired. But then we reach the PS3 and Xbox 360 era. AKA when the fire nation attacked, I, I, I just, I just chalk it up as that because that's, that's the best way to describe it. And the reason why I'm creating such a stop gap, but such a, 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 a emphasis on this era, I'm, I, I'm putting such an emphasis on this era is because to me personally, this is where a lot of the ire that a lot of people have for the gaming industry now started. And you want to know who's responsible for it? We are, we are. So let me break it down for you. Now we about to start getting into the real shit. Now we about to start getting, my bad, I just hit my fucking desk. Like I said, this area is not really made for me to look at y'all straight, straight ahead. So I'm gonna be knocking into shit and doing a bunch of random shit. But anyway, so the problem with the 360 in the PS3 era, the reason why I'm putting a bit of a stop gap right here and making a note of this era is because once again, not to sound like a broken record, but I really want to hit this home because it's the focal point of my conversation, you could say, right? Throughout the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, it was all about innovation, right? Then, like I said, the clock had reset when we hit the 3D era, right? And all the creativity and innovation was being pushed in. But when we hit the Xbox and 360 era, the clock on innovation hadn't been reset. It had been just kind of knocked back a little bit because you're talking about before we was, you know, 480p and all of that stuff. Now you're talking about 720p, 1080p and all of that stuff. Completely two different things, right? The clock had just been pushed back a little bit, but it wasn't reset. Why? Because ultimately, not to drag this out further than what it needs to be, there's nowhere else to go. And that is where the problem comes in too. That comes along with the creativity and innovation stuff that I'm talking about. You can throw that in that bag too. There's nowhere else to go. Think about it. In video games, where else can we go outside of the 3D space? Even if we was to do VR, which I think is the next step in gaming, but the problem is that a lot of the companies don't want to invest the time or money into gaming. It seems like the only company that's actually putting the effort into VR is fucking Capcom, which I don't understand why 
they won't release their shit on PC VR. For some reason, they only lock it to fucking PlayStation, and then they wonder why VR is not doing good. Then you got PlayStation who comes out with their own VR headset twice and have no fucking games on it outside of the ones that Capcom developed. It makes no fucking sense to me. But my point is that VR could be that space, but for some reason, none of the companies are actually investing time into it in order to make it a thing because honestly i think if vr got more of a push from your eas from your activisions you know actually sony making fucking games for their vr headset like they was doing with the psp and the psv because remember psv uh the psp had a mad i mean an absolutely mad ridiculous huge fucking uh library of games the PS Vita has a decent library of games, not as good as the, the PSP, but everybody knows the PSP had a fucking huge library of games that span all kind of genres. For some reason, PlayStation won't do that with the PSVR, but then they expect you to pay $600 for it or how much ever it is, which is just fucking absurd. And we could have that innovation. We could have that reset on the clock that I'm talking about, but for some reason, none of these companies want to do it. But going back to what I was saying about the HD era, right? And why this is the beginning point of some people would say the downfall of everything is because once again, if you're not gonna sit here and try to innovate again with VR or anything like that, you start to become stagnant. And when you become stagnant with innovation, you become stagnant with creativity. And that is the crux and everything that is wrong with the gaming industry right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the part of me talking about a different medium, right? And talking about, I don't know if I said this, I've recorded this video multiple times, by the way. So if I say that I've said something, but I haven't said it, I apologize, but I've recorded this video multiple times. Like I literally just did a 34 minute, a 34 minute recording of this video and I just deleted it cause it was not going the way I wanted it to. Anyway, the thing about it is that to, to go to the medium I was talking about, this is what's going on with the movie industry. This is one of the reasons why a lot of people have a problem with the movie industry. Now, I know I just gave you a brief history lesson on the game industry, but let me give you a brief history lesson on the movie industry and just a little bit of it, like a fraction of the time that I did with the gaming industry. But I'm gonna do this because I wanna show you the parallels between the two and why they are the same and why I'm saying that the gaming industry is just going the way of the movie industry. And to be honest with you, if you know, you know, the gaming industry has been trying to do that for quite some time, especially if you go and watch the last game awards that came out last year, you would fucking know how much they're trying to make that shit. Or was that last year? I don't know, time goes by so fast. I don't know if that was last year or was that earlier this year. Either way, if you go back and watch the last game awards, you will understand what I'm talking about, about it, about the gaming industry trying to be more like the Hollywood, uh, trying to be like Hollywood than just being the fucking gaming industry. And I'm not the only one that noticed that a lot of people bitched and complained about how many actors and, and uh, Hollywood people was on stage, how much the developers who actually make the fucking games and get enough time because you had people like fucking Anthony Mackie up there doing some cringe worthy shit. I mean, it was absolutely terrible. But anyway, going to let's get into the brief history lesson so you can see how these coincide with one another right so back in the early 1900s i'm not once again just like with the game industry i'm not trying to be super specific with the time or nothing like that it's just all generalization right so in the early 1900s movie the movie industry basically began right and because it was a new form it was a new medium at that time right because movie and television pretty much go hand in hand right you can't really have movies without television because you know you still got to have the sets and all of that to make a tv show like you do the movies so it goes hand in hand right so you're talking about up until tv and movies were being made it was pretty much radio stuff right like if you wanted to hear a show or a program you had to cut on the fucking radio and you had to listen to that shit but once movies and television started to become a thing, that completely changed because then you didn't have to worry about sitting around the uh, 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 radio listening to it and trying to picture it in your head. Now you can actually fucking see it, right? And so what came with that was once again, the two words that I've been throwing out there, 
creativity and innovation and because of those two things that's how we got movies like wizard of oz that's how we got the first king kong that's how we got the first godzilla you know and i know a lot of these come a little bit later than the early 1920s and stuff like that but it's the point of right that's how we got ben hur that's how we got cleopatra which to this day is still one of the most expensive hollywood movies out there especially when you adjust for inflation and that's because it was all about innovation but what ultimately ended up happening after a while, once the once Hollywood established itself as this money making machine that anybody can come in and it would just print infinite money for anybody who wants to be a part of that, it became standardized, standardized. And that's the reason why a lot of people are so fucking tired of cinematic universes. That's why a lot of people are tired of Marvel. That's why a lot of people are tired of like the shitty horror films that come out. Even though I'm not into horror, I hear about that all the time with people like, man, these fucking horror movies suck nowadays. It's because it's become standardized. It's no longer about the creativity. It's no longer about the innovation. It's no longer about doing something different. It's about how can we standardize this to where we will constantly in and in, in infinite infinitely print money with the least amount of effort but get the maximum amount of return that is why the movie industry is suffering as it is that is why a lot of people are saying fuck movies and going to youtube and doing that shit because there's nothing that they offer there's nothing that they try to innovate in order to keep people in theaters in order to keep people coming back for more they just say oh well we gonna keep on giving you this shit and you're gonna accept it so we're gonna keep on giving you that shit and that's what the gaming industry is going through. It's becoming standardized. And like I referenced earlier, and, and, and I, I probably did bring this point up, but then I went on some fucking side tangent and I apologize. Like I said, I've recorded this video multiple times, so I'm gonna fuck up. But as long as I get my points out, that's all that matters, right? The reason why I say that the 2006 uh, uh, and 2005, the HD era, is the cause of all of this is because let's go back so what actually came out during that time and what was going on during that time where we all participated in, but we did not know the monster we were setting up for or we were setting ourselves up with back then. So once we hit the HD era of gaming, the gaming industry, a lot of these big corporations like EA and all of that stuff, they start to realize how much money could be made when it came to gaming, right? So what did they end up doing in return? They said, you know what? Since we're making this amount of money off games, let's start putting more budget into our games, right? Just like what Hollywood was doing. You see what I'm saying? Putting more budget into these movies to make them bigger and better just to get a better investment. And now that's all Hollywood relies on are blockbusters. Once again, let's go back to the Marvel and DC and all of that. Why you think they keep on trying to pump out cinematic universes in Hollywood? Because that's what makes money, right? Or at least that's what they think is making money, right? So the gaming industry went the same route, right? Before all of that. But you get my point. They end up going the same route. So what ended up happening during this time, right? And whether or not you like these games or not, I don't give a fuck. It's just the point of, right? So you're talking about during this time. Let's just talk about some of the big games that came out during the PS3 era and the Xbox 360 era that we all know had budgets behind them, whether it be marketing of the games itself, right? So you're talking about, let's just talk about Call of Duty first. Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, World at War, Black Ops, Black Ops 2. That's just five. That's not even including Call of Duty Ghosts. That's not including Modern Warfare 3, right? That's just that's just those five that I'm mentioning. Whether or not you like any of those games, I don't give a fuck. But it's just the point of. And we all know the budgets that was behind those. Whether you talk about marketing or the game itself, all of those had huge budgets. Let's look at EA side of things. Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4. That did come out on PS3, even though it did come out on PS4 too. I'm just going to include it because... Nigga, I still have my original copy of Battlefield 3 on PS3. I can pull that bitch out right now. As a matter of fact, I am. Just because I can. Uh, here you go, right here. Battlefield 3. On, I mean, Battlefield 4, sorry, on PS3. So that's why I'm including that, right? So you're talking about that. You're talking about Bad Company 1, Bad Company 2. We had a lot. The Vietnam DLC that came out for Bad Company 2. You're talking about a lot of big budget games came out during that time that these companies was dumping money into. GTA 4, GTA 5, uh, The Last of Us, Uncharted, Gears of War. I mean, the list goes on and on. You're talking about all of these big budget fucking games that these studios uh, and these companies was dumping money into. And what were we doing as a consumer? We was eating it up. 
We was eating it up. We was all there. I bought Bad Company 2 and the Vietnam DLC. I bought Battlefield 3. I bought Battlefield 4. I bought Gears 1 and 2. I fucking bought Uncharted. I bought The Last of Us. I bought, you know, we all participated in it. And just like the movie industry, how we let them know that we like cinematic universes, that we wanted to see it. So now they keep on trying to rekindle that flame of trying to get a cinematic universe so everybody could have their own MCU. Everybody can have a slice of that money making pie that the MCU is, even though it's not as profitable as it used to be. But that don't stop these companies from trying to have all the money in the world. You know what I'm saying? Because of that, the gaming industry, right, is, is, is basically trying to do the same thing. It's basically trying to do the same thing. It says, okay, when well you told us back during the 360 era that you like big budget games, and you told us that throughout the PS4 era, so now that's all we're gonna provide you with. That's one of the reasons why these gaming companies keep on bitching about, oh, well, the budget for these games are so expensive. You're talking about development costs are costing up to $100 million, $200 million, $300 million, and shit like that. It's because that is what we had let them know. So what they're trying to do, and that's why I brought up the movie industry because it is the perfect parallel to this is that they're trying to figure out a way to standardize it just like with the movie industry they're no longer worrying about trying to be creative and innovate and stuff like that why because we've proven to them the formula that works you make a big budget game we pay for it and you make all the monies that's that's basically how they're they're processing it Oh, so you telling me all I have to do is spend $200 million on the game and you buy it and we're going to make money? Then that's all I have to worry about then. When that was never the point to begin with. They completely ignored the other shit, the creativity like with Gears of War and all of that, that kind of setting. They, they ignored all of that shit. They said, fuck all that. We're just focused on the back end and you giving us the monies. And that to me is where the industry is going and slash dying for a lot of people is that it's become standardized. It's no longer about the innovation. And that's why we keep on hearing the stories that we keep on hearing about development, uh, about developers and studios being shut down left to right, right? Mass amount of people being laid off because it's all about standardization. When you're trying to standardize, you don't give a fuck about the people that are making your games. You don't give a fuck about the studio. You don't give a fuck about the cogs that make your machine turn. You're just worried about, can I constantly keep this influx of money coming in? And that's also the reason why we've been getting a large and a huge push for live service games. That's why a lot of games have become live service despite them not doing well. Is Once again, that's why I keep on bringing up the movie industry, it's the perfect parallel. Just like how fucking Universal thought they were gonna be able to make a cinematic universe about the um, about the, about the uh, monsters, right? About like Frankenstein and Dracula and all of that, right? Even though they're the first to do it, for all you out there that don't know, a, a brief history lesson, a brief fact, the cinematic universe was invented way before Marvel. The, the monster universe existed back in like the fucking 60s or whatever, or the 50s, whenever they start that shit. Like the dark, uh, the dark universe that Universal was trying to make currently with Tom Cruise and Johnny Depp, that had existed back in the fucking 60s. They, did, they, they were the first ones to do crossovers in cinematic universes. So that's a fun fact if you didn't know. It wasn't Marvel that was the first to do it, or it was the most ambitious crossover. No, that was back in the day. But anyway, my point is that the parallels are there in a the sense of that's the reason why the dark universe tried to become a thing because even though the writing was on the wall the cinematic universes don't work i.e what happened with dc and and everybody else that tried to tempt one outside of marvel that's the reason why universal tried to do it anyway and mainly because they don't have nothing else outside of fast and fear so they, they're desperate to do anything anyway but you get my point that's the reason why they tried to do it because a lot of these companies don't care about the end product. They just care about what they can get from the product, meaning the money. And that's why they that's why they did it. Even though there was mad signs and evidence out there like, hey, this might not work out the way you think it is. They're like, fuck it, full send it. And that's what the gaming industry has been doing. They don't give a fuck about any of the other stuff that comes with it. They don't care about the creativity. That's one of the reasons why we have a Gears of War 6. Nobody is asking for Gears of War. Nobody is still fucking asking for Gears of War. To this day, I have not heard a single person say, I want another Gears of War. Most people, that series fucking died at three and it wrapped up at three. But for some reason, 
Microsoft keeps on printing it. Why? Because it's about standardization. But going back to my previous point about live service, I'm sorry, I, I kind of jumped the gun. My point about the live service shit is that that's the reason why we've been seeing a big influx in live service games is because you can standardize a live service game. Why am I going to sit here and spend because you know, video game costs and production costs are up so much, right? Why am I going to sit here and spend $200 million every couple of years or every three years or how many ever they rotate that shit out? Why would I do that? and do that constantly and be going down that road when I could just make one live service game and pimp it out indefinitely until I feel like it doesn't need uh, to be, uh, like it doesn't need to exist anymore, then I can delete it, get rid of it. You know, like what they did with Overwatch, prime example. Why, why would I sit here and spend $300 million every three to four years for you to make one game that might actually be good and might actually be somewhat creative or innovative or whatever the case may be? Why would I take that risk and gamble when I know I can just make one live service game, pimp that shit out for multiple years, and then whenever the fuck I feel like it, cut them servers off and make a new one and you just got to fucking eat that shit. That's a part of the standardization. You do what you need to do to where you mitigate the losses, but you get mad profit in return. And that's why the gaming industry is the way is the way that it is. It's not dying. It's far from dying. The gaming industry is bigger than ever. Don't get me wrong. I know Team Fortress 2 and StarCraft and, and League of Legends and all of those games, CSGO or CSGO uh, 2 or whatever they playing now. Uh, when it comes to that, I understand all of those games have had tournaments for years, right? But gaming is at a better, is it's in a better place more than ever because remember for a long time, gaming was just seen as a kid's thing. And don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of people out there that think if you play games, you're a fucking kid, which I think is fucking dumb because I don't see that being any different from you watching a football game. You watching a football game doesn't make you any manlier. It doesn't make you a fucking football player because you sit on your couch and eat fucking Doritos and yell at the TV about number uh, 72 not hitting whoever. How is that any different from me sitting down playing games? But anyway... Gaming for a long time was seen as a kid's thing, especially at, 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 at the beginning, in the early, you know, generations of it, when we're talking about uh, 70s, 80s, even early 90s, it was really seen as a kid's thing. It wasn't pretty much until the past, I would say 15 years or so, or pretty much when the Xbox 360 came out, is when that sentiment really started to change on, it, it was just for kids, because at that point, more adults was playing than kids. A lot of the times, the adults had to be the ones to get the game for the fucking kids, and most of the time, the adults that was getting the shit for the kids was playing the playing it with the kids or playing it separately. You see what I'm saying? So for the longest, the gaming industry was always seen as like a kid's thing. Gaming was always seen as a kid's thing. It was like, oh, if you're a man, you're not playing games, which I still find that to be fucking stupid, but I've already gone on my rant and tangent about that enough. But now it's no longer like that. The simple fact that we have video games in the fucking Olympics. Now, I don't know if it's been back since it first happened, but I remember when video games got into the Olympics because it was a, a fighting game tournament because I remember they was talking about Cammy's outfit and how the Olympics made them switch Cammy's outfit to uh, her uh, track suit one compared to her uh, leotard or whatever the fuck that thing is called because it was just a little bit too much ass on screen for them. And it was like, we can't have that. But then we'll put on gymnastics where all the cheeks are hanging out. But hey, that video game character that does the spiral arrow and has that long blonde ponytail, her cheeks too much. But the cheeks on this one chick that's about to do a triple double quadruple backflip with a twist that ass is all on screen but anyway um but my point is that that's how you know the gaming industry and gaming as general has come far to where it's even in the olympics so the gaming industry is not dying it's far from dying and we're always gonna have those games that come out and do fucking gangbusters that make the gaming industry look like it never even went through anything i.e gta 6 because let me tell you something Despite how much I do not want to buy that fucking game on my PS3. I mean, I mean PS3, damn, I'm thinking of GTA 5, sorry. Uh, despite how much I don't want to buy that game on my PS5, I'm going to fucking buy that game on my PS5, okay? There's only a few fucking games I bought that PS5 for. God of War, Spider-Man 2, and fuck it, GTA 6 is going to be one of them. I'm not waiting a whole fucking year for, for, for GTA 6 on PC. I'm just not going to do that. I'm just not. I'm going to play that motherfucker on PS5 whether I like it or not. But you get my point. 
and that honestly is all the gaming industry really needs it's it, it, and it kind of sucks to bring this nigga up after everything he done been through but the gaming industry is basically in his drake phase as of right now in the sense of that the gaming industry only needs to hit every once in a while and we good that that's pretty much what it is every once in a while uh, the, the gaming industry would drop a, a bomb that make it that pretty much makes everybody go oh shit this 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 motherfucker ain't playing out here and then everything is swept under the rug but at the end of the day the problem with the gaming industry is that it's not dying. It's nowhere near close to dying. It's thriving more than ever and it's better than ever. The problem is that it's just standardizing. And that is what's killing everybody. When you standardize, you kill creativity, you kill innovation, but not only that, you, you absolutely grind and murder the people that actually put their heart and soul into these games every single day especially when you start incorporating crunch culture which is a huge problem in the gaming industry once again if you do not pay attention to the industry side of things then you have no idea what i'm talking about but even if you pay a monochrome of attention to the industry side of things you know crunch is one of the biggest things that hurt a lot of people in the gaming industry and this kind of stuff doesn't help because you're already crunching them to death you're working them to death you're grinding them down into nothing but dust and then the first thing you do after they done devoted all of their time and their soul to you is literally go and blow them away like they ain't nothing and say all right get the fuck out you and all 200 of your people that was here bye bye oh yeah and you don't get a bonus that is what happens when you start standardizing so i don't think the gaming industry is dying but i do think it's standardizing and that's unfortunately is what is kind of killing the gaming industry do i think we can bounce back i do think we can but i think it's gonna take the right people to do it i think it's gonna take the right companies that have some authority and some power to do it like perfect example um i know from software is one of the good companies that have really been putting the game industry on its ass and being the absolute antithesis and the opposite of what you know ea and activision and all these other big companies think gaming sh should be and where they should go right or like even Warner Brothers, like what they did with Suicide Squad versus the Justice League. Once again, going back to the whole live service thing and standardizing, trying to make it as easy as possible uh, to make a game that you could just make buku money off of, right? Uh, but you got From Software, who's the exact antithesis of that, who, who take their time with their games to do everything right. Um, you got uh, people like, even though I've never played this game, I know for a fact, Larian is another one. Baldur Gate, Baldur's Gate 3 is huge. A lot of people love that game and say that's the another very prime example of how a, a triple A game should be done along with Elden Ring. And there's plenty more like that. So I, I don't think the game industry is dying. I do think that the thing is that we really need to prop up and give our flowers to the companies that do right to let the game industry know this is what we want and, and i'm not saying you should just go out there and buy a game that you don't want like if you're not interested in elden ring i'm not saying because of what they've done and the shit that they do when it comes to that game and how they price it and how they sell it and all of that that you should just go buy a game and never and then you never play it but you should let people know about it and you should give it as much flowers and as much credit as you can because that is what sends the signals to these gaming studios that this is what we actually want and it, and to be honest with you the thing about from software or larian and all of that the reason why those games are getting so much attention nowadays is because they're essentially doing what we loved back in the day that ultimately created the monster that we're trying to fight now it, they show love and attention they gave Gave it enough detail but they didn't forget about the consumer and that's the thing that 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 we love about the 360 era and one of the things that we that's one of the reasons why we were so invested during that 360 era is because it was like man they're showering us with all of these gifts they just keep on dropping hit after hit after hit it's only 60 dollars yeah i gotta pay for a little funky map pack every once in a while you know when you're talking about them i just spit all on my microphone i apologize for that um you know they'll you know especially when you're talking about like uh earlier call of duties how they had them stupid fucking map packs that i could never afford so i always have to bum it off somebody else like hey man let me let me download them maps off you bro you know <laughs> i mean i was in middle school what you expect and then you know battlefield ended up doing the same thing with their bullshit with their season passes and stuff like that but at that time it wasn't as nefarious as it is now because now they know how much money they can get off of it so that that to me is just essentially why a lot of people are campaigning for these companies and those are the ones that we should be going after and giving our most flowers to and giving the most respect and letting the gaming industry know this is what we want and this is what we always wanted 
don't let that other shit that was going on earlier get, get you twisted and get you fucked up. This is what we actually want. But the best way I could seal and end this whole discussion in this video, in this topic on the whole gaming industry is dying. At the end of the day though, what a lot of people got to understand, and that's the reason why I broke it up into two separate things of the gaming industry slash triple A part of the industry dying. I wanted to make that a clear difference. Cause at the end of the day, Yes, the triple A side of the gaming industry might be in complete fucking shambles. I'm talking about the, the infamous meme of the dog sitting in a room and it's on fire and they're drinking their coffee and they're like, hey, this is fine. Even though the triple A space may be like that, you want to know what side of the gaming industry is not like that? Indie. I know a lot of you probably already knew I was going there, but it's true. Indie is better than ever because even though the innovation and the creativity has been stifled in the, in the actual gaming industry with the big corporations, it hasn't been stifled with the indie side. And especially because technology is becoming easier and easier to, for people to adopt and become, uh, 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 you know, uh, familiar with, right. That goes along with gaming tools as well. Think about it right now, me and you can literally go down low unreal right now and go in there now granted we probably wouldn't be able to make a game for shit but it's the simple fact that we could literally go in down low unreal right now watch a couple youtube tutorials that are completely free and we can make a fucking decent game now i'm not saying we gonna make a game to where it's like oh my god i need to sell this for 60 dollars and then like a massive amount of people gonna buy it but it's that foundation that we're building. It's the blueprint. It's the simple fact that we can even go and do that is the good thing about it. And that's why I'm making abundantly clear that the gaming industry is not done as long as indie is around. And that's why I want to, that's why I keep on bringing it back to the movies. Cause it's the same thing with movies. A lot of people would tell you that Hollywood is dead, that Hollywood is this and Hollywood is that. And you're right. When you're talking about the more extreme big budget side of Hollywood, yes, it's in fucking shambles. But when you got studios like A24, which is just one of the biggest ones I can think of, that focus on smaller pictures, they focus on more smaller and indie type movies, you can't say movies are dead then because that means that you're not looking out for the ones you need to. And it's the same thing with gaming. You cannot say that the gaming industry is dead when you got mad indie companies that are putting out games that are rivaling or better than the fucking triple A studios. Like, let's just think about some of the ones that I could think of off rip. Let's look at like Ori. Ori, Willing to Wisp and Blind Forest. Two critically acclaimed games that has come from an independent studio. They have no ties association that I know of to any big third party or big company like your EA and Activisions. One of my favorite games that I just played here recently and I even did a video about it. I did this real shitty review on it called Cultic. It's a it's a Doom like uh first person shooter. It was like if Doom and Resident Evil 4 had a baby. That's what Cultic is. That game one person. One fucking person made that game. One fucking person made that game and it is fucking fire. Another game that I did a review on and played um, called Ultra Kill. Real fast paced Twitch shooter kind of remind you of like Unreal Tournament and shit like that back in the day. Made by a small group of people. The list goes on and on of stories like that. That is the reason why I cannot say that the triple A, I mean that the game industry is dying. Because as long as we have the indie side of things and, and indie is still rocking and innovating and pushing creativity, the gaming industry would never die. Yeah, from the big corporations that give us the games that we all know and love, your battlefields, your call of duties and, and, and all of that. Yeah, they're in shambles. They got shit to work out. That's all a clusterfuck, right? Warner Brothers with the Arkham series and how they fucked that up with, with uh, Justice League versus Suicide Squad or Justice League kills the suicide squad whatever the fuck the name of that game is yeah that shit's in shambles but at the end of the day as long as we have the tools that we need that anybody can pick up and it's free and we have the classes to go and do it on youtube and then like i said we have masses of massive amounts of people who are making games and developing them that are even rivaling triple a studios on the indie side the gaming industry is far from dead it is far from dead but i will say that fucking triple A side though, hey, that that side, it that side needs some serious work. And we could bring it back. We could. 
We as a consumer though, have to do our job to let them know we don't want that shit no more. And, and luckily quite a few people have been catching on with that. Redfall was the big, was one of the big flags. Um, Justice League versus Suicide Squad was another big flag. That was the biggest one. And I'm really proud of y'all on that one. I'm really proud of y'all on that one. Even though I was never going to play the game to begin with, I'm really proud on y'all for really sticking to y'all guns and giving it to them. You always going to have those few people who are always just going to try to fit in with whatever group that says the opposite and say, well, I actually think Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad versus Justice League is a pretty good game because of, and it's just like, all right, dude, fine. You know, and, and I'm not trying to do that for people that genuinely like the game, right? Cause there's always going to be people who genuinely like something that everybody else don't. And I'll even use myself as an example, right? I went back and played Mass Effect Andromeda plenty of years ago, plenty, plenty of years ago, like five years ago at this point. And I'm not going to lie to you. I think Mass Effect Andromeda is a good game. Now I do think it's a bad Mass Effect game, but I'm talking about the game itself when it comes out of gameplay and how everything works. The game is fire. That was what carried me through all of that game to the point to where I 99% my, my, uh, say profile, on Mass Effect Andromeda on PS4. And just to show you once again, I'm not bullshitting what I'm talking about. Uh, let me, let me, there you go. Oh shit, I almost dropped my game. Mass Effect Andromeda on PS4, right here. I bought this and I fucking thought this game was fantastic when it comes to the combat and all of that. The story, eh, the characters, eh, but the gameplay, I thought was solid to the point to where I did every single side quest in this game except for like collecting the little flowers and shit that that one botanist chick wanted you to do. I was like, I'm not fucking, I'm not your damn gardener. I'm not going around collecting shit for you, but you get my point, right? So I understand why, I, why I'm getting is that I know that there's a lot of people out there that just genuinely like games because they genuinely like them. And I'm not talking about you. If you genuinely enjoy Suicide Squad ver, uh, Kills the Justice League, then I'm not talking to you. I'm specifically talking about people who just want to be a contrarian just for the sake of being a contrarian those are the motherfuckers i'm talking about fuck you like y'all niggas need to grow up stop trying to blend in with everybody or trying to be a contrarian just to be different like stop that shit bro it doesn't make you look cool that's the people i'm talking about but anyway that's all i wanted to say i don't know what gameplay i'm gonna have up i'm pretty sure i'm just gonna slap up some resident evil gameplay resident 4 because i'm in the i'm in the mood to play some resident Evil 4 but yeah, I just wanted to talk about that because like I said, this is a topic that has been talked about for quite a bit on whether or not the gaming industry is dying. And, and like I've repeated multiple times, I don't think it's dying. I think the gaming industry is alive and well and is better than ever. I just think that the triple A side of the gaming industry just needs some rework because it's too busy trying to standardize just like Hollywood. It's trying to be like Hollywood when it was never meant to be Hollywood. The gaming industry is meant to be the gaming industry and Hollywood is meant to be Hollywood. They should not intersect, but because Hollywood is so good at standardizing and effective is just printing she like just sheets of money the gaming industry want to do the same thing, low risk, but high reward. And that's the problem. And what that ultimately ends up doing is stifling creativity and innovation. And, um, that that's all it is, man. I, I don't know if we are ever going to be able to get out of this. I feel like we can, if we really push back hard enough, but at the end of the day, when you got motherfuckers that go and buy every call of duty, even though it's the same shit every single year, they go and buy Madden every single year and Madden is making, you know, a billion dollars off microtransactions and call of duty is making billions of dollars off microtransactions. It's hard to compete. It's hard to compete. It's hard to get that message across to them because we can be sitting here all day saying, Hey, we don't like this. Like stop making these live service games. Like I'm fucking done. Like I don't want any more of these. Stop trying to take my money at the end of the day. Billy Joe and Bob, they going to go over there and be like, man, I spent $200 on Madden last week and I got me a fucking whatever Patrick Mahomes. I don't, I don't participate in Madden and, and pack openness. I don't even know, but I got me a gold Patrick Mahomes and that's all that matters. Like I literally know a dude who spent $200 on Madden and came to work and told me about that shit and was just perfectly fine with spewing out that he spent $200 to get one character. And then when I proceeded to break down to him, so you told me, and this is what I'm saying. I, I said to him, no bullshit. I literally said this to him. I said, so you're telling me you spent $200 on Madden packs to get one fucking football player, one digital football player. You spent $200 
to get one fucking digital football player and you're going to turn around and do the same thing when the next Madden comes out next year. That's what you're telling me. And that nigga literally looked at me in my face and said, yeah, I said, hey, nigga, that's your money. You do what you do. So when you got motherfuckers like that, when you got motherfuckers like that, that are willing to spend two hundred dollars, people, two hundred dollars for one character in Madden and then will immediately go do the same thing next year. What are we talking about? That is a hill in a battle that we're going to fucking die on before the battle even gets started. And that's the problem that 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 goes with all of the stuff that I was just talking about. So hopefully I got my point across. I tried to do this the best way I could. Like I've said plenty of times already, I've done this video multiple times. So I'm pretty sure I left some shit out. I'm pretty sure I'm, I added some shit. I have no clue, but that's what these meat dogs are about. Me cutting on the camera, just talking about whatever. Hopefully this will cause a discussion in my comment section if you even made it this far and heard my points and stuff like that. And I wanna know your take on it. Do you think the game is you dying? Do you agree with any of my points? Do you disagree with my points? I want this to be an open discussion and let's not try to attack one another, which I know is a stupid thing to ask because people gonna do that shit regardless because niggas are niggas. But you get my point. I just want to have an open discussion on what are your thoughts on my take or anybody else's take or what's your take. Just once again, just having an overall general discussion on this topic on whether or not the gaming industry is actually dying. And uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting making this meat dog, but I did. And uh, I'll see you the next time I make one shit fall. I know that may be another year from now. Who knows?